Another day, another story of insecurity as bugglers thumb Asha Rock while Northern Leaders Forum throws its weight behind talks of impeachment against the president. And Ohanez Ndi will condemns shoot at sight policy in Southeast. Also, Peter Albi claims that there is a plot to blackmail him by a current state governor. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Ann O'Connor. The big question every Nigerian is asking right now is where exactly is safe in Nigeria? Because a gang of robbers reportedly attacks the residences of the Chief of Staff to President Muhammad Buhari, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, and an admin officer, Abubakar Maikano, within the president's um, presidential villa, Asso Rock. Well, meanwhile, the Northern Elders Forum have thrown their weight behind the calls for impeachment of President Muhammad Buhari, warning Nigeria cannot survive two more years under his regime. Well, joining us to have this conversation is former National Deputy uh, Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Mr. Timmy Frank. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Great. I'm sure that you obviously are following the stories in Nigeria and all of the headlines, the crazy ones, the outrageous ones, and of course, the realistic ones. Um, and you obviously know that um, Nigeria is facing some form of um, insecurity and it's not just now as normal you would hear insecurity you think about the northeast but now it's literally happening everywhere in the country but let me start with the Asorok situation um, there have been conflicting reports of course when the story first broke um, the two presidential aides on social media uh, had conflicting um, reports. One said it was fake news. Another came to confirm that actually that story was true. Um, when you hear that a, a, a house of an aide to the president, uh, or rather the chief of staff to Mr. President, was attempted to be boggled, um, what, kind of, what kind of message is this sending to you as a Nigerian? Um, and, and for one who has been following all of the events that have been unfolding in the country. Yes, uh, first of all, let me thank you for having me. And uh, I want to say good evening to Nigerians. It is very clear with the conflicting reports that you just talked about right now, within the presidential aid, that should show you we're in a confused government. When you start seeing conflicting reports from a presidential villa, this is the first time we're seeing this kind of embarrassing situation. That shows you they themselves, you know, they are confused. They are not united, they are not together, and that is why you can see under the watch of General Buhari, Nigeria cannot be united, because if he cannot unite his own house, unite his own staff, how can he unite Nigerians? So it is very clear that this is just, uh, you know, a very clear embarrassing situation that in the history of Nigeria, we've not seen where, you know, before today, the presidential, you know, uh, the presidential villa or maybe the also rock, you know, has been boggled as they claim. They said it was boggled. And it is very clear, that is to tell you clearly that this government is very incompetent. This government is not serious to tackle issues. But again, I want to tell you that uh, what has happened, you know, for me, in the other way around, is bad. But in, this, in the circumstances we find ourselves today, I think uh, this scenario has shown clearly that uh, what they are suffering from today is the same situation of what they put in Nigerians. Because today, I can tell you clearly, there is poverty in the land. There is unemployment, there is kidnapping, there is hunger, the economy is zero. So that shows you, where are you, you know, that shows you very clearly that the people of Nigeria are tired. And now they've decided, you know, to take the struggle, the, 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 the struggle straight to the presidential villa. 
I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I apologize, but I want to take you up on that. You're telling me that it's okay for a person to try to, I mean, because it's a stupid attempt, if you ask me, to try to invade or boggle one of the most secure places in this country because you're hungry. Is that not a stupid thing to do? You can't tell well, me that, 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 that that's, that's because your, the person that is hungry. Our, that shows our security system has collapsed. So it's not my fault or it's not the fault of Nigerians that our security system has collapsed. Let me tell you, these are the same situation the common Nigerian suffers every day in their houses. You see criminals breaking into their homes. You see such kind of things happening. You know, so if today it happens, Kambari is not the first or Mekanu. They are all Nigerians. They are not bigger than the common Nigerians. So if today they are, they are, I didn't see any reason why this should be an issue. It is clearly shown that they are the ones in power. That shows if they were doing the right thing, if they provided jobs, if they have created employment, if they, you know, you know, beefed our security, we will not see this kind of case. So this is failure on their own part. I'm not saying this scenario is good, but at the same time, I'm trying to let you know this is what they created. So it is good for them to also feel the impact. So at that point in time, I think they're going to do something to the security system. This is going to, you know, to, to make them to really work hard, to let them know that it is very important to secure Nigerians. It mm. is very important to secure the Nigerian citizens. So now that it's happening to them, maybe security issues will be taken serious. All this while, security issues have not been taken serious. So I think this is the reason why I said this at the same in the other way around is not also bad for them. It's yeah. condemnable, but <laughs> this same I'm set curious. of people should do everything to secure the country. I'm curious once again, permit me. Um should I know the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces, he's supposed to be, I mean, he's number one, but then the people who are supposedly protecting that parameter are, are supposed to be the ones checked right now, not Mr. President. He's not carrying a gun and walking around the perimeter fencing of the Asso Rock Villa. So, I mean, really, can we also say that, okay, it's because yeah. Mr. President is not doing his job as a chief security officer, that's why Asso Rock security men are not doing their jobs? Yeah. Is that even an excuse in the first place? Should the we not be putting the these people the on the chopping board the right now, not the president? Officer. The president is the chief security officer of the country and the chief security officer of the presidential villa. Whether the president carry guns or he does not carry guns, the truth is if the president has appointed competent hands, we are not going to be seeing this kind of shameful embarrassment. That is just the truth. Why didn't situation like this happen under General Obasanjo when he was there? Why didn't scenario like this happen under the late uh, Sheikh Musa Yaradua? Why this the same thing did not happen under the former president? Good luck to nothing. So this is to clearly show you know Nigerians that uh, General Buhari is a failed general. So when you have a failed general in power, this is the kind of you know situation you are going to find yourself. That shows he does not have any intelligence background. And I want to use this opportunity to say, you know, that I don't think and I don't believe General Buhari truly is truly a general because from the man of which has handled What does Nigeria that even mean? He he was a general. You saw him. He was a general. He was a military head of state. And you saw him, you saw him be a general. So when you say you're not sure if he was a general, he has, I mean, we, we were we all alive to, to see him be can, a general before he transited to being to someone who was in plain clothes. You can listen, we've seen other presidents that are general. Under General IBB, we did not see situations like this. These are his colleagues. Under General Sonia Bacha, we did not see this kind of scenario under general abu salam abu Bakr, we didn't see things like this so why under general buhari security system there's nothing to write about so it is very clear that his own general needs to be questioned and first of all remember this is a man that till today till today we've not seen you know his certificate to show that this man truly was qualified to be a general even the Nigerian army came out to say, tell the whole world clearly that they cannot even find his certificate. So that, that is why I said General Buhari's, you know, general needs to be questioned. Because if he's truly a general, even the military should have by now provide, you know, the certificate to show this man rise from, you know, from the grass to the top. But today, we cannot, even Jonathan, that was not a military general. 
he has done better in terms of security than Buhari. Okay. And then we said, you know, this was the same Buhari who were saying that, oh, when I come to power in six months, there will be no Boko Haram. When Jonathan was president of Nigeria, remember, yes, there was insecurity, but the insecurity was just only in the northeast, just like as he said, just in the northeast. But, but today, tell me which part of Nigeria that is safe from the northeast to his own village in Dara. The president right now, I can tell you, cannot even go to Dara and spend two weeks. He cannot. The last time he was in Dara, they went there to kidnap children and students when a sitting president was in his hometown. So that tells you this man has failed. Okay. That tells you this man does not have the capacity and will. And let me tell you clearly, it is, be it is because the man is not in charge. Is not in charge. If General Buhari was in charge, it was if, if General Buhari was truly the president of Nigeria, Nigeria would not remain like this. Well, but he is the president of Nigeria. He was sworn in. Control. We also, when he was sworn in, he's truly the president of Nigeria. He was voted into power, and he is truly the president of Nigeria. If we're going by semantics, but let's move on to other issues. Um, anyway, the, the, let me correct. Let me correct. Let me correct the, you on that part. Let me correct you, please, on that part. General Buhari was not voted by Nigerians. There are very still the vote of Nigerian people. Nigerians never voted. Well, General either way, Inek, Inek returned him. There was a conspiracy by the military. It, by this is this is. INEC, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is flogging a dead election. horse. Inek returned Mr. President as a you know a, the president of this country. So whether we want to debate that INEC back and forth. Inek, Inek is a corporate. But he is the president. You know, like I said, he is the president. He's sitting. Well, he yes. is the president. And and when this I'm issue was saying, when this I'm, issue I'm was up for debate, I'm, trying to, I'm not saying he's not the president. I'm trying to let you know this man stole the, the mandate of Nigerian people. That is why he does not have the experience and capacity and idea to lead the country called Nigeria as of today. He has been overwhelmed by the all activities of the country. So clearly, Nigerians never voted Buhari, is still the mandate of Nigerian people. And that is why today, until General Buhari comes to apologize to Nigerians, the same way Yaragua did. You remember when Yaragua came to power in 2011? After the election, Yaragua told Nigerians that despite the circumstances that brought me to power, I apologize and I believe future elections will be great, which means Yaragua let Yaragua that it's also from Katsina like General Buhari, confirmed that the election that brought him in 2011 was rigged. So therefore, he assured Nigerians of electoral reform. He assured Nigerians that the elections after him will be better. This is what we expect Buhari to do until he starts confessing his sins. To say, look, I stole the mandate of Nigerian people, that Nigerians should forgive me for stealing from them. I bet you, until he made that confession, Maybe some of the troubles we are passing through today we are not going to come out of it because it is very clear that that is the only way God can forgive us. Okay. So, All right. not just General Buhari, including the INEC chairman, okay. Professor Mahmoud Yakubu needs to come out. Let's who not do declared Buhari to be the winner of the 2019 election when we all know knew very well that General Buhari did not win that. All election. right, let's move away from including this because we're not Buratai, discussing elections a today. Buratai, using military to rig the election for Buhari. We will come back another day and talk about rigging of elections, but let's talk about the insecurity that Nigeria is facing right now. That's the uh, core of our conversation. Um, the chief of staff to the president had come out to uh, in a statement to say that um, nothing there was nothing to worry about, you know, after the incident, because they said it was an attempted incident and it was failed. It was a failed, you know, attempt. Uh, it was unsuccessful. But then again, um, we all are made to know um, by reports that both the chief of staff and the admin officer have, as a result of this failed attempt, been prompted to leave their homes. So they're not in their homes right now. Of course, because if, if something of this nature happens, it means that you know you know you have to check what's happening um, within the country. But let's move away from that. As they're still trying to figure out what happened in Asso Rock, the South South governors have uh, the Southwest governors, I beg your pardon, have been having a meeting, um, and today is the last day of that meeting. I'd like to give you some 
information as to what they spoke about. They spoke about restructuring. Uh, they talked about um, national dialogue. Um, they refused open grazing and said it would never happen. Uh, would you like to comment on some of these things, uh, the issues that were raised? Yes. For the first time, let me thank the governors of the southern governors that then this is the first time we've seen them despite party lines to come together to discuss the issues bordering the country. I commend them for a good job, but I want to make it very clear that uh, I have seen their communique and uh, I totally agree with them, with their position, but we think as Nigerians that they should go beyond this communique. We don't want this to be lip service. We do not want this scenario to be where you just come and talk and there is no action. We want to see action. We want to see them coming up and take strong decision. And again, we expected them to come up with a plan to say, look, General Buhari, you failed as the president of Nigeria to protect the citizens of this country. We expected them to take a, this, this kind of the same position. We saw the Northern Forum where they came up to tell us clearly that Jair Buhari should either resign or be impeached by the National Assembly. So if his own kingsmen are calling the National Assembly to impeach him or Jair Buhari should resign, I expected the Southern governors should have also as well today make a pronouncement by telling Jair Buhari that you failed us, you can no more longer lead, so therefore you should resign. We expected them to say if you are not going to resign. But these men, but most of these men that you're making reference to are, are members of the same political party. I'm sorry to sp speak over you. Most of these men you're making reference to are members of the same political party with the, the president. Um, I mean, there's no precedence. There's never really been a precedence where members of the same political party are able to point fingers at the president so loudly and so boldly. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand why you expect that to happen. Is it going to be a magic or what exactly are you expecting? Are they more closer? The same political party we are talking about. The Southern Governors Forum is not made up of APC members. We have PPP members, we have APC members. So the truth is, what is happening today in Nigeria is beyond APC or PDP. We must get it right. The people dying, are they members of PDP alone dying? The people dying, are they just Christians alone? The people dying, are they not Muslims in their, in their midst? So what are we talking about? The people dying, are they just APC members? Nigerians are dying. So this is beyond, you know, issues of PDP or APC. The truth is the president has lost control of the country. And today there is no leadership in Nigeria. Okay. First of all, for a president that has surrendered his the sovereignty, whether we like it or not, to say, look, from the example the president demonstrated recently after his phone call to the Secretary of State when he was begging, begging for the America to relocate the American base. To Nigeria, that tells you clearly that you have seen that I cannot no longer do this job. My military in Nigeria is no more longer competent. Therefore, I need help from the United States of America. Please bring down your military to secure my country. That shows the president has failed. And I think these are some of the things that prompted his own king's men to call on him if not to resign or let the National Assembly do their job. So if his own king's men can take this kind of situation, why will a European governor not stand up for the truth? Why will an Indian governor not stand up for the truth? Why will an Igbo governor not stand up for the truth? They are not representing their parties, you know. They are representing the people who elected them. The people okay. who elected them have decided to say, it's high time for the National Assembly to do the needful. It's okay. high time General Buhari should resign. All right. Let me give you a response coming from the presidency today. Um, the Minister of, in, the, of Interior, I think so, um, sorry, the Minister of um, State for Defence had said something today. I think he talked about the fact that most of us have been saying that, um, that there's this belief that the government is being overwhelmed by the insecurity in the country. But they're saying, and I'd like to quote him directly, that the government 
and its security agencies have the wherewithal in terms of personnel and firepower to crush uh, insurgents, bandits, criminals, and other enemies of the Nigerian state. So what you're saying, um, that the presidency is overwhelmed, the president cannot, he has failed, our army is incapable. This statement from the presidency negates all that you're saying. They're saying that uh, what, whatever you are saying is propaganda. You're trying to start a fire where there is none. My sister, let me tell you clearly. Their statement and the president has conflicted themselves. I'm not the one that demand for the American to, to relocate their military base to Nigeria. It was the same president, Buhari, who requested an appeal. He was even begging. So if the Nigerian military or the Nigerian security agencies have the will and capacity to defeat the bandits, to defeat Boko Haram, to defeat all kinds of criminal activities in the country. Why would General Buhari beg for the U.S. support? So that shows you they are confused. Mm. I'm not surprised. The president should give one directive. His ministers should give another directive. The, 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 the government of General Buhari, they are not united. They are confused. And that is why you can see everything that is happening today is also part of the corruption in this government. This government is the worst government ever in the history of Nigeria. Today, every government official has taken advantage because to them, the presidency has no capacity to investigate them. So everybody, is, everybody has decided to loot whatever that comes their way. And that is why you can see, it is very clear, all this, you go to the military. Tell me one sector of Buhari's government that is not corrupt. From the military, it's very corrupt. You go to the cabinet members, they're all very corrupt. So tell me which sector. Can can tell you me. can you so give us proof? Can you give us control. proof on live TV? Because you're making these allegations on live TV, and I'm 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 having to play the devil's advocate because the president is not here. Neither is Mr. Lai Mohammed or all the people who speak for the president. But you're saying that they have been looting. People in the president's cabinet have been looting their different ministries, departments, and agencies. Where's your proof? I can give you. Where's I your can proof? give you an example. Let me tell you clearly. Listen. Remember, I want to remind you. I'm not making propaganda. I'm telling you, you are in Nigeria, you read the dailies every day, you read the news. These things are very clear. Look at what is happening all over the country. You saw what happened in NPA recently. The same government is accusing the former MT of NPA of over 160 something billion naira. This is an evidence. We are reading in recent time how, you know, the Minister for Petroleum, Timmy Christie, was accused of different corruption. We've seen in recent time how the former governor of River State, that is the Minister of Transport, Rotimi Chibika Mechi, has also been accused of corruption. These are cabinet members. First of all, remember some of these persons that Buhari made minister in his cabinet today. Some of them, remember, they all have years, the majority of them have years in case before they became minister. Okay. I can give an example, like my own government. We're, we're, we're out of time. I'm so sorry. With the EFC. I'm so sorry. It was I even wish a we... minister in Buhari's government that was prosecuting him. So what are we talking? Let's not shut. Great. Um, unfortunately, we, we have to wrap up, but I want, I want to ask one last question. Recently, the presidency has come out to say that there are people who are trying to topple its government uh, and some of them are within and some of them are without. And we know that you're not in Nigeria and you are uh, a serious critic of Mr. President. Um, and one would wonder if you fall in that category of people who are trying to overthrow Mr. President with your criticism. Um, and I'd like to ask, what party do you belong to, Mr. Timmy Frank? You used to be in the APC. Where, where are you aligned right now? Let me... Let me tell you before we leave, first of all, you know I'm not in a Buhari street. I'm just a realist. Remember, I'm one of the founding members of this party called APC. Before I resigned my position in 2017. So what party do you belong to? I can give you, I what, can give you the history of APC. I know. The what political party APC do you belong to, Mr. So T.B. Frank? I'm not a critic, but I'm just a realist. It what? is because I decided not to take part of... The okay. satanic rule. Can you answer my question, please? I know. I'm going. I know. 
So what political party are you aligned with? Do you have any intentions in well, the future to run for any office I'm in just, Nigeria? I'm an activist right now. So you do not I'm belong to any activist. political party right now? Oh, oh yeah. I'm just a political activist. Okay. I'm just fighting for a better democracy in Nigeria. I'm fighting for a better future for the Nigerian youth. I'm fighting to make sure we want to see a government that will come and kill corruption, not to promote or celebrate corruption. But today, under General Buhari's government, under the APC government, what they used to do is to promote those that have looted our resources. They celebrate criminals. And that is why you see nothing is working in Nigeria as a country. Okay. So, but let me right. tell you, we are not just going to fold our hands to do, you know, to watch some of these people. Let me tell you what some of us were working on right now before we go. First of all, we've directed to make sure the members of the opposition party, the two minority leaders in the both houses, we've directed them, we've sent message to them to start commencement of impeachment of General Buhari. Okay. That right. they must not wait. This is the time for them to rise up, to stand by the side of the Nigerian people. We've asked them to come up with, with motions. Okay. To, to, to come up with I mean, we have to go. motions to everybody that has been accused. We, Remember today, we have to go, Mr. Frank. We have to go. I apologize, but we have to go. Timmy Frank, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. Well, nothing is happening. So, uh, we're not just going to sit down. We, Nigerians in diaspora right now, we're taking some strong measures to list out those corrupt people in this government. Okay. And I can assure you very soon, very soon, you'll see a minister under Buhari's government who we'll go to America or we'll go to London and they will not come back to all right. Nigeria. We need Don't to go. Me. We need to go. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now and when we return, Ohaniz Indigo warns the Nigerian government to learn from history by not fighting an unwinnable war. Stay with us. <laughs>